phylum periphera. Sponges or sea sponges. The phylum periphera is a large phylum that includes thousands of different species of sponges. Sponges are simple, multicellular aquatic invertebrates. Most sponges are colonial and marine with some being found in freshwater and just a few in brackish waters. Adult sponges are essentially sessile, meaning they are firmly attached at the base to one spot. Sponges will anchor themselves to the ground or an object, such as rocks, corals, or shells, and then they don't move again, living their lives in that one spot. While most sponges are sessile, some sponges can move very slowly along surfaces, creeping just a few millimeters a day. They do this in several different ways, such as contracting and shortening their cells. Sponges vary in size from a few millimeters up to two meters across. They differ in shapes from flat growths, to tubes, vases, cups, balls, blobs, cups, fans, barrels, ropes, and crusts. Almost all sponges are asymmetrical. Sponges can be colorful or drab. Some stand erect, some are branched or lobed, and some are low and encrusting in form. Some bore holes into rocks or shells. Sponges are filter feeders, feeding on suspended plankton, detritus particles, and bacteria. While most sponges are filter feeders, there are a few carnivorous species. Adult sponges lack true organs and tissues, and their bodies are full of tiny pores called ostea. These pores connect to a system of internal canals, chambers, and or a larger internal cavity. Sponges draw water in through the ostea and out through a larger pore or opening, called an osculum. Some sponges have a single large osculum and other species have many oscula all over the body of the sponge. The inner surfaces of the canals, chambers, and or internal cavity are lined with specialized collar cells called choanocytes. The choanocytes are used for food gathering and respiratory gas exchange. Each choanocyte contains a sticky collar which is used to trap food, and a single hair-like structure, called a flagellum which is used to generate a water current. The flagella whip back and forth. The beating motion of the flagella creates a steady current that draws water into the ostea and expels it through the internal canals, chambers, and or internal cavity, then out through the osculum. The incoming water brings in food particles and oxygen in the ostea, and the outgoing water carries sponge waste and carbon dioxide out of the oscula. There are three main body structures and canal systems of sponges. They include askinoid, sicinoid, and lucinoid. Askinoid sponges are small and tube-shaped. Water enters through the ostea into a large internal cavity called spongoseal. In these sponges, the spongoseal is lined with choanocytes. The choanocyte flagella pull water through the pores, then into the flagellated spongia seal, and then it is expelled through a single large osculum. Similar to askinoid sponges, sicinoid sponges have a tubular body and a single osculum, however, they are larger in size. In sicinoid sponges, the radial canals that empty into the spongia seal are lined with choanocytes. The choanocyte flagella pull water through the pores. Water then travels into incurrent canals, then into the flagellated radial canals, then into the spongia seal, and then it is expelled through the osculum. Lucanoid sponges are the most complex of the sponges. They usually form large, colonial masses. Each mass has its own osculum, but individual members are poorly defined and often impossible to distinguish. In lucanid sponges, the chambers that connect the incurrent canal to the excurrent canal are lined with choanocytes. Sponge bodies are generally a mass of cells, embedded in a gelatinous, jelly-like matrix, and stiffened by a skeleton made up of two structural components, spongin, or spicules. Spongin is made up of spongy tough fibers of protein. Spongin forms a soft, flexible skeleton. Spicules are tiny, hard, needle-like or spike-like structures made of silica or calcium carbonate. 
spicules form a hard, rigid skeleton. The spicules come in all different shapes and sizes. They are used for structural support and to protect the sponge from predators. Sponges can be made up of only spongin, or only spicules, or a combination of both. This depends on the type of sponge. Some sponges lack both spicules and spongin and just have a simple, soft body structure. Sponges are generally divided into four main classes based on their body structure or overall morphology, skeletal structure, and the type of spicules they possess. They include class Demospongia, class Calcarea, class Hexactinellida, and finally, class Homoscleromorpha. Class Demospongia are the demosponges. This is the largest and most diverse class of sponges, constituting about 90% of all living sponge species. Their skeletons can consist of either silica spicules, sponge and fibers, or a combination of both. Class Calcarea are the calcareous sponges. They are characterized by spicules made of calcium carbonate. Class Hexactinellida are the glass sponges. These sponges have a sturdy lattice-like internal skeleton made of fused silica spicules. Class Homoscleromorpha is the smallest and newest class of sponges. These sponges usually sprawl horizontally and are characterized by small spicules made of silica. This concludes the video. For additional videos on biological resources, please go to my back bio page.